Amen. But we're not praying to Jesus. We're praying to the Father. Amen. But in the name of Jesus Christ. Because yes. that's what he taught us. He said, when you pray, yes. amen, to the Father, in my name. Yes. Yes. Amen. So we always want to remember to pray to God. But it must be in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this time, be compressed. See, remember those that are sick and afflicted. Amen. Continue to pray for the bereaved families that the Lord will continue to ever give them grace, give them comfort yeah. in the name of Jesus. They can press you. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank we thank you, Lord, for being in the house of prayer once again, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for waking up this morning, starting our way at giving our lamb with blood, one of in our vein, we ask you, Lord, for to stand by today, Lord. Lead us and God us right now. Help us look to the hill. What's coming out of help? Bring out our help that's coming from you, Lord. Go with us to stand by today, Lord. Lead us and God bless those that sick, those that shed in right now, Lord. Bless the Marine family. Bring down Sister T Ball, Deacon T Ball, Lord. Give them the strength that they need right now, Lord. We ask you, Lord, look at our pastor, Lord. Give him the strength. Bless his home and his family, Lord. We give the word we need right now, Lord. Open up our mind, open our hearts, Lord. Give strength from day to day. Watch over, protect us right now, Lord. We thank you, we praise you. Give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Percy. Amen. Again, we're grateful to the Lord for being back in the house of prayer. Amen. God is good and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. My mind went blank that quick with the song. Amen. It's like driving sometimes and you're so tired and your mind just leaves you and you wonder where you at. Amen. You just forgot which direction you're headed and you just finally come to you and wait a minute, I'm on the right track. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So my mind just went blank for a quick second. But it happens. Yeah. Amen. So those that uh, notice it, I just want to let you know what happened. <laughs> Amen. My mind just went blank that quick singing the song that I've sung so many times. Yeah. You know, that's why I said I thank God for the Holy Ghost because if He don't bring back our remembrance, yeah, yeah. Amen, we all certainly is lost because we all is destined to forget things. Yeah. Okay. Amen. So if it offended anybody, amen, please forgive me. All right. Amen. amen. At this time, we're going to go to our Bible study on this evening. The scripture that have been following me, amen, I would say about for a month or at least three weeks. All right. Amen. I thought that I would get to it last week, but the Lord took us a different route. And I was talking with someone. I said, well, the time is right, I would teach on it because I always wait for the Lord not because I get a scripture I jump to teach I wait for the leading of the Holy Ghost because at all times when it's all said and done he's the teacher amen. and I'm just the vessel so I gotta wait for my marching orders wait, wait. amen so once I'm giving my marching orders then I move forward in the name of Jesus all right you want to call your attention tonight to the book of uh, Obadiah Right after Amos, the book of Obadiah. The book of Obadiah, which is only one chapter. The shortest book in the Old Testament. Now many of you probably don't even think about Obadiah and probably didn't even know that there's such a thing called Obadiah book in the Bible, but there is. Alright, All right, so but it's right after the book of Amos. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, so after Amos is the book of Obadiah. Mm -hmm. And it's right after Obadiah, I believe it's Jonah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's before Jonah and it's after Amos. Alright, so it's in the middle between Amos and Jonah. Yeah. Alright. All right, I know somebody may ask him, Lord, we're going to Obadiah. Where are we going with Obadiah? But you'll see what the Lord has to say to us all. Amen. All right, let us read and I'll give you the topic as we go along. 
All right, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus said the Lord God concerning Edom, We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Amen. So Obadiah, praise the Lord, is speaking concerning Edom. Now Edom is the descendant of Esau. Now just to show you, amen, that there was always conflict between Edom and Israel. Remember, Esau and Jacob were twins. And with them being twins, the blessing went to Jacob instead of Esau. And remember, they were twins, amen, but Jacob came out first, no, Esau came out first, but then Jacob came behind, but Jacob was holding on to Esau's heel. All right, but before the children were born, it was said that the older will serve the younger. All right, but we know later on in the process of time, Jacob was known as the supplanter, amen, or the deceiver. But in the process of time, him and his brother, if I make no mistake, amen, was able to mend things up. Praise the Lord. So Jacob had to face Esau one day. Mm -hmm. All right, he had to face his past one day. But he thought, amen, that his brother was still mad at him because of him stealing the birthright. But Esau told Jacob, keep your gifts. Amen, God has been good to me also as well as to you. Amen, Jacob divided his wives and his, his servants. He put his servants first. Amen, then he put Leah Praise the Lord. Then he put his other wife. Praise the Lord. But Jacob was left alone. Amen. As he wrestled with the angel. Praise the Lord. But the Lord had softened Esau's heart. Amen. Not to, I would say, take revenge out of his brother. Amen. But God brought Jacob. Amen. A long way. Amen. But after Jacob, with Jacob's name was changed to Israel. But Esau descendants, praise the Lord, still had something against the children of Israel. Now just to give you a quick background, let's go to the book of Numbers chapter number 21. Numbers 21 and then we'll come back. All right, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. All right, Numbers chapter number one, 20, actually 20. Let's go to 20. Verse number 14, all right? Of Numbers chapter number 20. And we're going to read from verse number 14. When you have it, say praise the Lord. All right, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. All right? All right, everyone have it? All right, let us read. And Moses sent up messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus said the Lord thy brother Israel, Thou knowest all the travail that hath befallen us. So you see now, they are brethren. All right, so now Israel, which was Jacob, and Edom, which is the descendant of Esau. So they are basically relatives. All right. How our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and has brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields or through the vineyards, neither will we drink 
of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left until we have passed thy borders. And Edom said unto him, now you think about Edom is not just one man, is speaking amen of the nation, mm -hmm. but the king of Edom is the ruler. Mm -hmm. All right, and Edom said unto him, thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel said unto him, we will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border, wherefore Israel turned away from him. Praise the Lord. So going back now, these are two descendants, the descendants of two brothers. Praise the Lord. So Obadiah is riding onto Amen Edom. Now we're getting ready to go in, amen, to the meat of this Bible study. Right. Praise the Lord. So let's read verse 1 again in Obadiah. The vision of Obadiah, thus said the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Verse 2, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that said in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Now, the people of Edom, they dwell in the clefts of the rock. Mm -hmm. They felt so secure, amen, that they were untouchable. Mm -hmm. That no one was able to destroy them, no one was able to penetrate, amen, and destroy them because of where their house were located. Now, because their house was in the rock, amen, they, their homes stood high above other people's homes. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it that caused Edom, amen, to look at themselves as superior to other people? Right. Now, the key word is pride. Now, that's the subject tonight. God will reward pride. Mm. God will reward pride. Now, they thought that they were untouchable. Mm. They dwell high. You know, you think about this. The first sin that we have heard or read about in God's word is pride. Lucifer, I believe in the book of Isaiah chapter number 14, talked about Lucifer who was one, amen, of the angels there in heaven. And he was one, amen, that walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. He was beautiful. Yeah. The way that God created him, amen, that there were pipes that were built into his wings. That when Lucifer would flap his wings, amen, music would start playing in heaven. But in Isaiah chapter number 14, he began to look at himself, and every time Isaiah said what he said or spoke what he said, it was I. Mm -hmm. Everything he said, I will ascend into the heaven. I will be like the Most High God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Everything about Lucifer was I. Praise the Lord. But then the Lord spoke something there. Uh -huh. Said, I believe, something about the pride of thine heart. Let me get Isaiah chapter 14. Let's read that just a little bit. Verse 12. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Thou art cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in, where did Lucifer said it? All right, so the thought was already conceived in his heart. Now, if you have a thought in your heart, no one can really tell unless you start to manifest what's in the heart. All right, because remember now, as the Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All right, so Satan had this thing in his heart or in his mind. All right, but now if he have it in his mind, now remember now, what's in the mind would start to be manifest through the mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. Our late pastor used to tell us, don't say it, slip. Mm. All right, it just came out. What's inside came out. From, but out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. So when the mouth is speaking, it is speaking what is in the heart. Amen. All right, so this is what happened. Thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mouth of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now you see what pride did to him. Pride, the Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter number 16, pride goeth before destruction and a holy spirit before a fall. All right? Pride first conceived in the heart. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever a woman conceived, it's just a matter of time before she bring forth. Sure. But she cannot bring forth, or she cannot say that she is pregnant if she never conceived. All right, she will bring forth that which she has conceived. Not unless something happened and she lose the baby. But as long as she maintains the pregnancy, after so many months, she will give birth. She cannot continue, amen, to stay pregnant for the rest of her life. So what was conceived in the mind of Lucifer, in the heart of Lucifer, he began to manifest it, and he began to speak it out of his mouth. And everything he said, it was I. He was not satisfied with what God gave him. He wanted to be like the Most High God. In other words, he wanted to ascend above God. Now that is so presumptuous that a created being, amen, will try to overthrow his creator. Praise the Lord. Lucifer was a created being. But when pride gets in an individual's heart, they believe that they can do things even though in them they know they can't do it. But pride would cause some people amen to go beyond. Yes, sir. And remember this now wherever you find pride humility is always absent. Mm -hmm. And wherever humility is present then pride will always be absent. They cannot coexist or they are not impalable, impalable to each other. They do not serve each other. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, Obadiah is writing unto Edom. Their pride. Praise the Lord. The pride of thine heart, thine heart has deceived. You see what pride does? Pride deceives people. Like Nebuchadnezzar. Filled up with so much pride that one day he forgot that the one that exalted him was God. Mm. The one that blessed him with what he had was God. But one day he stepped out on his back and then he looked towards Babylon. Mm. After, amen, the understanding was given, amen, concerning the image. Mm -hmm. And that it was said that Nebuchadnezzar was the head of gold. Now he got lifted up in pride. So one day he walked up on his balcony and he looked at Babylon, how established it was. Yes. 
Then he got in his heart, looked at Babylon and said, Oh, Babylon, look what I have done. Now, he forgot that God blessed him. So many times along this way, we forget that the blessing that we have received, we didn't achieve it on our own means. It was God that blessed us with what we had. Amen. And if we had something, we receive it. It just didn't jump out the thin air and arrive in our hands. It was given to us by God. Amen. When you would say, well, preacher, I went to work and I worked. It wasn't God that worked. Mm. But let me ask you a question. Who gave you breath to breathe? Huh? Who gave you strength in your body to get out of bed and go to work? And this is what God warned the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter number 8. When you get into that land, uh, don't begin to say, uh, the, uh, my power uh, and the wealth of my hands, my power have gotten me this wealth. I did this. God said, don't forget now, when you get into that land, remember where all of your blessings come from. And when you remember where your blessings come from, you will always acknowledge the Lord and thank the Lord that he blessed you. But when pride gets in the heart, pride is a dangerous thing. I'm going to say this. This is where preachers, especially pastors, got to be very careful with the word pride. The more God blesses a pastor and blesses him with the knowledge of his word, the more humble he must stay. The more God reveals his word to a pastor or a spiritual leader, that leader must remain humble before the Lord. He must never get to a place now because God began to bless him. He think now he know it all. Nobody knows it all. And if the pastor is the under shepherd and Jesus is the chief shepherd and bishop of our soul, there is something that even the bishop and chief shepherd of our soul don't even know. So Jesus don't know everything. So if the chief shepherd don't know and the bishop of our soul don't know everything, how is it the under shepherd knows everything? Does that make sense? So now pastors and leaders in the church must remain humble before the Lord. Don't allow pride to get in our heart. Well, the Lord used me to preach a nice message. The Lord blessed me, amen, to sing that song under the anointing. But you forget the key word is the Lord. Uh, if the Lord didn't bless you, how could you have done it? Praise the Lord. So always remember now, this is where your blessings come from. Some people, they didn't have much. But the Lord blesses them and they become great. How many of them remember where all of their blessings came from? The blessings begin to blind the truth. And instead of them acknowledging that the Lord did it, they begin to focus on their wealth as their security. So now you got to be very careful now. What you have, always remember it was the Lord that blessed you with it. It was not you that did it on your own. All right? So now he said, now, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that said in his heart, who shall do what? Bring me down to the ground. Is that what Nebuchadnezzar said? Oh, Babylon, look what I have done. Then the Lord said, all right, if you did it, that means I didn't do anything. And that night, praise the Lord, now the Lord said, no, my glory belongs to me. Now you're taking my glory that should be coming to me, now you're taking it as a man. That very night, Nebuchadnezzar was driven from the throne in the field. Uh, and his nails grew mm -hmm. like bird claw. Right. And he began to grow hair like feathers on him. Mm -hmm. uh, now this was the king sitting on the throne. And in one night, because of pride, he lost his position on the throne only because 
cause of pride. And for seven years the Lord kept him out there. Mm. Lord said, I'm going to prove to you now that I rule in the kingdom of men. And that throne you got Nebuchadnezzar, I'm the one that allowed you to have it. You didn't get it on your own. Amen. So now those that got positions in churches, don't ever get to a place where your head gets so big that you say within yourself, oh, I know it all. I'm better than this person. Or I want the spotlight to be on me. I'm going to bring up something later on. Praise the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar was out there for seven years until he came to himself. And when he humbled himself and acknowledged that there is a God that ruled in the kingdom of men, God restored Nebuchadnezzar back to the throne. Listen to me. Pride will always take us away from the Lord. But even though pride may take you away from the Lord, if you find yourself as the prodigal son did and humble yourself, God can restore you. Amen. But if you continue to proceed in your pride, then folly would be your end. Mm. So not because pride has taken all of you, that's the end. If you can repent, if you can turn around and acknowledge that there is a God that rules in the kingdom of men and don't put your job before the Lord, don't put a position before the Lord, don't put a house before the Lord, don't put material things before the Lord because material things will take you away from the Lord. But Nebuchadnezzar humbled himself. When he humbled himself, God restored him. Now, you might be out there and pride took you away. The only way to get back, you got to repent. But sound will never repent. You know why? Because pride, they're so prideful. They got so much pride that they can't come and be like a prideful son and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against thee, and I'm not even worthy yeah. to be called thy son. Make me a higher servant. Oh, they don't want to come back humble. Mm -hmm. And because they can't come back humble or choose not to come back humble, pride will destroy them. So now the inhabitants of Eden were dwelling in the cleft of the rock. Mm -hmm. They thought that they were untouchable. But God now was pronouncing judgment against them. All right, let us read some more. Verse number four. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. You see how far they don't exalt themselves? An eagle flies so high than any bird on this earth. This is how far pride took the Edomites. That they were so better than other people. They were dwelling in houses in the cleft of the rock, and no nation can penetrate them. In other words, we are untouchable. Have you ever run into some people that feel like they're untouchable? That nothing can happen to them? They can do whatever they want to do and get by? Nobody can tell them nothing? Remember this now. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Now consider the end. Uh, what is the end? There is a way that seems right, but the end thereof is the way of death. Yes, Keep on living, one day you're going to die. But you don't have to die in pride. You can die in a repentant, with a repentant heart. Now, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, Thence will I bring thee down, said the Lord. So the Lord said, don't know how high you go. Mm -hmm. Lord said, I know where you are. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I'm going to bring you down. Mm -hmm. Now let me say something. If God bring anybody down, which mortal man can lift them up? If God curse someone, how can you stay blessed when God curse you? And how, if God don't reverse the curse, you still curse. Amen. But when God bless, he bless, and no man can curse. But once God curse you, can nobody come behind and bless you? All right, read.
If these came to thee, if, came to thee, if robbers by night, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? How art thou cut off? Would they, Would they not have stolen, stolen till they had enough? If the great, great gatherers, gatherers came to thee, would they, they not leave some grace? grace? All right, praise the Lord. Now listen, the same thing that Edom did to other nations, God was going to allow to happen to them. Remember the Bible said, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. They did these things to other nations. Now the same thing they did is the same thing was going to come back to them. And the reason why it's coming back to them because they choose to remain in pride. But if somebody would humble themselves, yes, you may have to suffer for what you did, but it may not be to the extent as if you remain in pride. The punishment may be a life punishment, and at least you still live. But if you continue to stay in pride, then the punishment will actually lead to what? Will lead on to death. All right, read on. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hid things sought up? The Lord knows. Praise the Lord. Everything that we conceive in our mind, God knows. There is nothing that is hid from God. Now let me give you a little, a little bit more. Even before I was born, the Lord knows what I would be thinking right now. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So there is nothing hid from God. You might have it in your mind, and your brother and sister don't know. But who knows? So now, they, they used to say the old saying of the late Bishop Malone. The biggest fool that ever lived is the fool that fooled himself. Now, it's a bad thing for a fool to fool himself. And there's another saying, you might be slick, mm -hmm. but you can't slide on barbed wire. Praise the Lord. You might think all of the evil things that you got in your mind, don't nobody know. But the Lord said, I, the Lord, I search the heart. Now, if God is going to search my heart, I got to be honest with myself first and say, Like Jesus said, now if a man look at a woman to lust after her, he have committed adultery already where? In his heart. So the Lord said, even though you didn't carry out the act, it was done in your mind. And if it's done in your mind, it, it's the same thing as you carry it out. So the Lord knows what's in the heart. Nobody can hear me say, think. Nobody can hear you, nobody thinking. Nobody can see you thinking. Oh, you might stand up and say, you look like you're thinking. Yeah, but you don't know what I'm thinking. But God knows everything. Nothing is hid from God. Nothing in the heart is hid from God. That's why David got to a place where he said, create in me. But before he said create, you know what he said? I acknowledge my transgression. David said, before the Lord cleaned my heart, I got to acknowledge that I was wrong. Now, how would pride go away if you don't acknowledge that you're wrong? How can I go to heaven with a prideful heart? How can God bless me with a prideful heart? Now, I got all of this stuff in my heart. Nobody knows, but the Lord said, I see everything. And then he said, well, unless you repent of the thought or the imagination of your heart, you will stay bound. Mm. Nobody is going to heaven thinking wrong. Mm. So if they have evil thoughts in your heart, you ain't going to heaven. Oh. If I have evil thoughts in my mind, if I don't use the word of God to clean my mind out, after a while, that event, those thoughts will actually bring me into a place of corrupt 
corruption. And whenever a believer gets in a place of corruption, if you don't humble yourself, corruption may not be able to be reversible. So in the midst of pride, if you see yourself, you got to acknowledge, I'm the one, my mind is messed up. I'm the one that I'm not doing what I should do. All of us knows what's in our mind. Oh, and the mind can deceive a lot of us. That's why the Bible said, let every man take you less when he take his stand. He fall. Now go on, we're going to bring up some more points. All the men, all the men, thy confederates, have brought thee into the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread and laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. They that eat thy bread of what? Read that. They that eat thy bread and have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Sometimes you got people eating right to the table with you. But you just don't know what's in the heart. They sit down, let me give you an example, a dinner, a family dinner, a church dinner, whatever. They're looking at you smiling. They're looking at you talking. But you have no idea what's in their heart. They make you feel, make believe, that they're actually with you and for you. And they actually support you. But deep down in the heart, they wish, praise the Lord, they wish that you might even die. They wish that they can get what you have. Sit down at the table with the husband and wife. Well, I can't wait for the. Uh, is, is your husband sick? Mm. I, sure, I sure hope he died because I want his wife. Mm. I love <laughs> or I sure she died because I want her husband. Mm. Mm. I love These things happen. People act as though. They are with you and for you. All of us can testify to this. That's why I learned something. It was a bishop, I'm with you. I don't want nobody telling me they're with me. Tell me you with the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you with the Bible, then everybody that's with the Bible, you are with them. Mm -hmm. But telling me or telling somebody you're with them, it got to be proven. Mm -hmm. Not by just word of mouth, it's got to be proven by what? By actions and deeds. In other words, if I forgive someone, then my action and deed must prove that I've forgiven that person. But if my action shows something different than what the words came up my mouth saying, then I'm deceiving my own self. Because I know I still got all of that stuff in my heart. But I'm making you feel as though we are right. When deep down in my heart, I wish nothing but evil for you. So they sit down and eat bread with you. But deep down in their heart, they would love to see something happen to you. They, make, they start making preparation. Praise the Lord. Making preparation. Well, the pastor is saying, well, they're going to make preparation. But I know you just got a year more to die. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So I'm getting myself ready. I'm getting myself in place. <laughs> See, it? I'm getting myself ready. I know that sister is sick or that brother is sick. So I can't wait for them just the doctor to take them down or take them out. 
Praise the Lord, so I can get their position. If what God has for you, it will always be there for you. Amen. Saints don't go around wishing evil. Waiting for something to happen so I can get your position. But I want the pastor's position. I want the deacon's position. The question is, does God want you to have it? The Lord said, I set one up and I bring one up. If God don't choose you, how are you choosing yourself? Then some even get to a place where they just get presumptuous. I know more than that brother. I know more than that sister. And then they got more presumptuous. I know more than the pastor. Now, if something wrong, if the Lord knows that you know more than the pastor, but you sitting back there and the pastor sitting up front. Now, tell me God made a mistake, somebody. God don't know what he's doing. He don't lost things. Because you're highly qualified and you still back there, but the pastor is less qualified, but he's here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God don't make no mistake. No, he don't. Come on, read on. Yes, sir. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom? Understanding out of the mouth of Esau. You see what the Lord said? The wise man that is among Edom, God said, I'm going to destroy them. Mm -hmm. Because their worldly wisdom tells them that they are self-sufficient. In other words, they can provide for themselves. They can survive on their own. They don't need the Lord. And this is what the Bible said, the wisdom of this world is sensual, it's devilish. The wisdom of this world causes someone to exclude themselves from the wisdom of God. So they go around saying, there is no God. Then they get to a place where they say, well, how does God know? What do you mean, how does God know? God knows everything. Read on. Thy mighty men, thy mighty men, mm -hmm. shall be dismayed. To the end, every one of the mouth of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Read on. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame, shall cover thee, and thou shalt cut off forever. Praise the Lord. Listen. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. And he said, I will repay. Though somebody may think that they are continuing to be evil to you and treat you evil, remember God sees it. But you don't have to overcome evil with evil. Overcome evil with good. And don't take vengeance into your own hands. The Lord said he was going to cut them off. And when the Lord cut them off, he said he's going to cut them off forever. Mm. Read on. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried, carried away captive his forces, and, and foreigners enter into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was on one of them. Praise the Lord. Now wait a minute. Edom was Israel's brother, their relatives. But they began to rejoice in their brother's downfall. Praise the Lord. People sometimes will rejoice in your downfall. There are people that are waiting for you to fall so that they can rejoice in your downfall. But remember this now, remember this, remember this. The best way to prove people wrong is to do that which is right. 
And when you do that which is right, God will bless you and you will succeed. So that is the way to prove people wrong when you do right and that God bless you to succeed. When you succeed, they got to acknowledge that the Lord is in your life. And when they looking for you to fall, God begin to pick you up. Uh, God begin to elevate you. Because now they want to prove to everybody what they said about you is true. And all they want to see is you fall down on the side so that they can tell everybody. You see what I was saying about that person? You see what I said about that church? Give that church a few years, the doors will be closed. Give that brother and sister a few more years, they ain't gonna be serving the Lord no more. So the way you prove them wrong is to love the Lord with all your heart, yes. with all your soul, with all your might, and with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Read on. Thou shouldest not have looked on, on the, the day, day mm -hmm. of thy brother, my brother in the day, day that, that he came, came to strength. strength. Neither should it thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither should it thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. You see, the Lord said, no, I have a problem with that. The Lord said, now your brother is in distress mm -hmm. and you want to rejoice. We talked about the members of the body. All members is on one body and every member has their role and function. So every member in the body of Christ has something to offer. But two is better than one. But we don't rejoice when somebody falls. Somebody falls and say, oh, you go shout. Somebody backside, oh, you shouting hallelujah. We don't rejoice when these things happen. What the church should be doing is praying. Because if I truly love that brother or sister that fell or what done happened to them, my love would cause me to pray for them. My love would cause me, you understand, to still treat them right. I've noticed something among church people. Sometimes if somebody backslide, when they start coming back to the house of God, some people look at them like in a scornful way. Like they can't say nothing to them. Don't you know you could have been that person? And who knows your kindness that you show to that individual You know, I'm smiling at you, but I'm glad you are the church. Mm. I'm glad you are the choir. Mm. I'm glad you are the brotherhood. Mm. I'm glad you are the sisterhood of the men. You know why? Because you wanted in position. Mm. Now you're rejoicing in the understanding with them falling. They're facing distress in their demise. Thank you. You are rejoicing. And God said, either I'm going to get you. Because that's your brother. Those are your brethren. And they are being taken captives. Read on. Thou shouldst should not have entered, entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. calamity. Yea, thou shouldst should not have looked on their affliction. affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. You see what they did? In the day of calamity. Israel now, Judah is now being deported as captives. 
And the Edomites, which were their brother, stood. And not only that, but took their stuff. If it don't belong to you, leave it alone. But why did they do all of this? It was because of pride. And when pride is in the game, all pride see is I. The disciples there in the book of Luke, of, um, Luke chapter number 14, if I make no mistake, they begin to reason among themselves. Who is the greatest? Jesus now took a little child and brought the child in the midst of them. They begin to reason among themselves, I'm better than you. I'm greater than you. It might be chapter 9 or chapter 14. I'm greater than you. I'm better than you. I'm going to get the best position. Jesus loves me more than you. He's going to use me more than you. What they begin to say among themselves, Jesus said, let's settle all of that. He said, except you come as a little child. Except you come with a humble heart before God, there is no way you can stand before God. The Lord will not use someone with a prideful heart. God does not use anybody that has a prideful heart. They may be used, but it's not by God. So the Lord said, now, don't be like the heathen. Don't try to go after who's greater and who's better than who. Those things should not be in the body of Christ. Who's better than who? I can preach better than him. I can sing better than him or her. I can teach a better Bible study. I can do a better exhortation. You see what we say? I, 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 I. Where is the Lord in it? Where is the Lord in it? And the middle letter of the word pr pride is I. So Lord, let's think among ourselves who's the greatest or who's better than who. Nobody is better than nobody in the body of Christ. And Paul said one plane, one water, but the Lord gave the increase. So who's the most important one? God is. Because if God don't give the increase, will there be any increase? If God don't send the rain, the scientists can cause it to rain. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So don't let us boast. I'm better than that person. Who's better than who? This is what pride does. And this is why the Lord gave me the scripture. To warn against pride. Pride is just like the devil. So, praise the Lord. You don't see it overnight. But as long as it's in there, it begins to grow. It's just like a seed. Keep watering that seed and see what happens. They rejoice in Israel's downfall, in Judah's downfall. If God bless you with a position in the church, be thankful. And don't try to get the upper seat. I believe Jesus told something in the, I believe it's chapter 14 of Luke. When thou art bidden to a feast, Jesus was in the house of a Pharisee. But then he took note of something. Might be 14, I think around 45 or 46, if I make a mistake. Is it 40, Luke 14? Might be Luke 9. No, that's it. Is it 9? No, 14. It's 14? Yeah. 
Four TV inverters. Eight. Yes. Let's read seven. Mm -hmm. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden. When he marked how they choose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, so Jesus is in the house observing the guests. Mm -hmm. And there were some coming in, but all they want was a high seat. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why they want the high seat or the chief seat is so that when everybody come in, everybody can see them. In other words, now they put themselves, you understand, that everybody must notice me because I got this special seat. I got this special position. And if I am high, that means you low. So that means you got to look up to me and I'm looking down to you. Listen to what Jesus said. When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit down in sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. So Jesus said, now, don't embarrass yourself. In other words, what he's teaching is humility. Don't exalt yourself. Stay humble before the Lord. They love to be seen. Some people in the churches love to be seen. And if the spotlight is not on them, they don't feel important. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. Some people feel like the spotlight got to be on me. And if it's not on me, I'm mad. I come to church, I'm sitting in the back. Because why did the pastor tell them to do that? Why did the pastor be heard to do that? Then some get to a place where, oh, that person up for the pastor's pet. While I'm sitting there, as a pastor, I don't have no pet. Yeah, I got a pet, he's at home. And that pet is a four-legged person. He's a dog. Praise the Lord. Huh? So I don't have no pet. Somebody wrong, they wrong. They right, they right. And if the pastor don't know some things, God knows. So nobody don't get by with God. Nobody ain't get by with God. Read on. He that bade thee and mm. him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou began to be with shame to take the lowest room. See, Jesus said, now, sit in the back. Huh? And when you sit in the back, you're showing humility. Don't run for the upper seat. Don't seek after position that will put you in the spotlight. Stay humble before the Lord. Amen. And whatever God has for you, it is for you. Just stay humble before the Lord. And you ain't got to do nobody evil to get what they have. Just be faithful to the Lord. Stay faithful before the Lord. And when your time is ready to be blessed, you want to be blessed. Amen. Don't envy nobody's position in the church. In other words, rejoice with them if God bless them. God bless them with a nice house, rejoice with them. A nice car, rejoice with them. The Lord give them a position, rejoice with them. Because if God bless them, their blessings become your blessing because you feed off of their blessing. Amen. And if we all in the same building, whatever is in the building will be blessed. Amen. Oh. Be like, um, what's his name? Obed-Edom. Mm -hmm. Everybody that went in obed 
Nathaniel's house was blessed. You know why? Because the Lord was there. And if the Lord's present is there and everybody stay humble before the Lord, we all going to be blessed. But I don't have to be jealous of somebody else what they got. I don't want what the Lord bless you with. What you got is for you and what I have is for me. And if God, and I've said this before, praise the Lord. I said if the Lord bless any other bishop or any minister with something, and they teach it, it makes sense. What do you think I'm going to do? I'm coming home and teach it too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Call me a Catholic if you want to, but if it's right, it's right. Amen. And if it's in the Bible, it makes it even the more better. Amen. So if you something, I'm blessed because what God gives you, you will enlighten me. So you're supposed to rejoice if, if the Lord bless me with something, now I'm enlightening you, you should rejoice now that the Lord has blessed me. Amen. But if you don't want to rejoice, more likely you jealous. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Praise him. But let me say this again. If God bless somebody, you can't curse them. Is that what Balaam tried to do? Balaam prayed, paid him money, but Balaam said, I can't go beyond the Lord. <laughs> Don't you worry with people. If God bless you, let them talk. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let them run their mouth until they drop. If God bless you, Balaam said, they are blessed. Read on. Ooh, 
whosoever exalted himself mm -hmm. shall be abased. He that humbles himself shall be exalted. Every time somebody in the church tries to exalt themselves, the Lord is abasing them. Every time they try to prove that they're better than somebody, the Lord is abasing them. And every time you think you did something important, God is resisting you. The Bible said in the book of Peter, God resisted the proud. Say so anybody that got a prideful, arrogant spirit, God is resisting you. You're not even in the bride of Christ. But God give grace to the humble, to the lowly. See, God give grace to the lowly people because the lowly folks know their existence is coming from God. But the people that feel like they know it all, they don't even need God. So stay humble. This is what Jesus said. Don't try to seek no high seat. God, I'm glad you choose me to be an usher. That's good enough. And see that I'm an usher, I'm going to be the best usher in the kingdom of God. If I'm a van driver, I'm going to be the best van driver. If I clean the church, I'm going to be the best cleaner the church ever seen. Why? Because I want to do it to the glory of God. I'm not doing it to lift myself up. Well, let's go on back. We want to close off. Go back to Obadiah. Verse number 14. Verse number 14. He should have stood, have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldst thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. You see that? They stood in the way of their own brother. When they tried to escape, they stood in the way. Families right now got so much problems among themselves. Mm. Oh, praise it. And some problems among families don't have to be. But the reason why some people still got family problems, I give you one word, unforgiveness. Their heart is filled with unforgiveness. So that's why they respond a certain way. That's why they act a certain way. Because of unforgiveness. Yeah, they're smiling at you, but deep down in their heart, there is unforgiveness. And then look what Christians do with unforgiveness. Still come to church. And come to the altar. Friday night, Lord, I need a car. Please bless me. And if I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. The Bible said, friend, forgive. And if you don't forgive, your brother or your sister, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. A lot of problems in families and in the church family is unforgiveness. People hold stuff and hold stuff and it becomes just like cement. It becomes hard. Mm. Praise the Lord. It becomes so hard and once it gets so hard, they begin to manifest the ugliness that is in their heart. Get rid of unforgiveness. But I can't forgive them because you know what they did to me? Well, you know what the Bible said? God forgive us for Jesus' sake. If God can forgive a wretch like me for Jesus' sake, who can I forgive? I should be able to forgive even my enemy. Yes, some things hurt, don't it? Oh, yeah. But does that mean God is going to give me a free pass into heaven? No. Praise the Lord. Families came 
of the law. Family problem. These were two brothers. But one choose to look down on the other. If you have a family member that you can help, why not help them? If you are in a position to do good to them, why not do good to them? But I ain't gonna do good to them because I remember what, you know what I used to, when I was growing up, I used to watch Chinese movies. And the old action Chinese movies, they always had a story that, but I remember what you did to my father 70 years ago. So they come in to take revenge. Get rid of it. James said like this. Some people said, I got faith. Well, where is your words? Now James said, if you got that much faith, now he's going to say, no. If your brother is destitute, is in need of clothing, and he come to you naked, and said, I am cold. Give me some clothes so I can get warm. What do you say? Depart from me, I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What good have you done? That's what James is saying. Now you say you got faith, but where is your works? If you didn't have faith, then the works would be whatever my brother or sister stand in need of. If I can help them, I'm going to help them. But if they're going to take advantage of me, I ain't going to help them. But if you are put in a position that you can help somebody, help them. And don't hold on to what they did 50 years ago. And I can't forgive them for what they did 50 years ago. They enjoy their life. You are miserable. Can't sleep. Stressed out. And there they are at the mall every day. You stressed out at home. Let it go. Praise the Lord. Free yourself and free that person. Because until Job prayed for his friends, only then did the Lord turn Job captivity around. Until you do right by someone else, that blessing God has for you, he'll keep it until you do right by that individual. So if you owe somebody an apology, apologize to them, move on. Well, they can't forgive you. That's on them. If they choose not to forgive you, you can't force nobody to forgive you. But you be honest and say, I'm sorry. But if they won't accept your apology, move on with the Lord. And don't let them play the guilt game on you. Make you feel guilty because they're miserable. You miserable because you choose to be miserable. And you ain't gonna mess up my happiness with your miserableness. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You wanna stay miserable? Stay miserable. But I'm gonna stay happy. All right, let's finish up. Day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. Near upon all the heathen. Mm -hmm. Thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. What you have done mm -hmm. coming is coming back at you. Read on. And he has drunk upon thy holy mouth. So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink. And they, they shall, shall swallow down, down, and they shall be as though they had not met. But upon upon thine, upon thine, shall, shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. You see that? Stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord had spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistines. 
and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sephard, shall possess the cities of the south. And the saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord. The Lord will reward pride. So if there's pride in anybody, let's search ourselves. Do like James. Look in the mirror. And don't tell God there ain't no pride in you when God is telling you you got a prideful heart. God knows me more than I know myself. Amen. Whatever you can do to help your brother and your sister, help your brother and sister. Don't be like the Edomites that rejoice in their brother's downfall. Don't rejoice when somebody falls in the church. Pray for them. And don't treat them like outcasts. Praise the Lord. Well, I see them in the store. I can't, I can't say hi to them because they left the church. Ask yourself the question, would Jesus do that? With love and kindness, have I drawn thee? I'm not saying you go along with the wrong, but the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, we must show love to everybody. Even if they talk about you, you still got to love them. Even if they put you down, you still got to love them. Now, I can't love my enemy. Jesus said, love your enemy. And that's not recommendation. <laughs> that's a command. Yes, sir. Love uh, your enemy. Love to love your enemy is to treat them right. You can have the opportunity to do your enemy wrong, but you choose to do them right. Be just like the, um, the children of Israel, I believe it was, in my closing. It was David. I think it was David, the man. Praise the Lord. The man after they went and recovered. Mm -hmm. No, it was Elijah. Thank you, Lord. It was Elijah. The man that was smoked with blindness. The servant wanted to do something to them. He said, Master, let's kill them. Mm -hmm. Let's do away with these captives. The prophet said, don't do that. Take their chains off. Take their bands off. Feed them and send them back to their master. Now you say to yourself, well, I can forgive them. You telling me to let it go? These were folks that was just <laughs> on the battlefield and they killed some of my brothers and sisters. Now you say, let them go to their masters? Bishop, you don't know. Well, I don't, but who knows the Lord? And no matter what we say or do, the Bible is still right. Overcome evil with good. And as much as lies within you, live peacefully with just a good man. He said live peaceably with all men. Because in doing that, give them a cup of tea. The Holy Ghost got to prepare you for that. The Holy Ghost got to help you to get to that place. But you know you can get to that place. 
The Holy Ghost can bless you to get to that place where you can learn. You hear what I'm saying? Learn. How to live with that person. How to dwell among your enemies. The Holy Ghost can do it. But I got to yield. But a lot of times we don't want to yield because the flesh always want to get even. And I want to do it my way. You know, Jen, some way is a bad way. Until he let the Holy Ghost have his way, where is he going? Until you let the Lord lead you, you ain't going nowhere. Praise the Lord. Just believe what the Lord said. Now this is all the Lord gave The Lord gave me the scripture, like I said, a month or three weeks ago. To warn about pride. Let's stay humble before the Lord. Starting with me. I thank God for what the Lord has given me. But I'm not better than nobody. And if I'm not better than nobody, nobody's better than me. Praise the Lord. You know who's good? Jesus said, why call this on me good? Ain't none good but God. So that means, praise the Lord, we all are subject. We all are subject to come short. But let's not use that as an excuse. Let's use it as a means to overcome. I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to overcome that. And when I overcome it, don't get relaxed. Well, I've overcome this and I ain't got to worry about it no more. Don't fool yourself. Satan is always around. And when the unclean spirit is cast out, he go and try to find another house. And if he find another house, he coming back and check up on the house that he was cast out of. And when he come back, he see you just chilling. He see you at home when you should be a prayer meeting. Praise the Lord. He see you at home. Oh Lord. When the pastor leaves down, you should be in church. You at home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Holy Ghost said, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Should you be a church? Yeah, but it depends on who's there. Then my presence will be made known. People miss the blessing so easy. They become servants of men. They become pleasers of men. Our faithfulness, our dedication is not to the pastor or to the deacons. It is to the Lord God and His Son, Jesus Christ. The pastor didn't die for you. The deacons didn't die for you. The mothers of the church didn't die for you. It was Jesus. And because Jesus died for me, I will be faithful and dedicated to him. And I ain't going to let nobody keep me away from the house of God. If that's where the Lord want me to be, that's where I'm going to be. Be careful of pride. Don't let pride be your end. Pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall. Go back and read over that again and meditate on it and see why God decided to send judgment on Edom because of their prideful heart. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen.